And back here at home, we have our own kids, and, and we know that in a lot of these classrooms, children are talking about this. Um, you just said it. You said yep. your nine-year-old's talking about this. It's so much of a focus that even school officials are now weighing in. In fact, New York City Schools Chancellor David Banks released a statement yesterday saying he is providing resources to these schools to facilitate these impossible discussions about what is happening over there. But how should we talk to our kids? And I think that's something that's everybody in the newsroom this morning we're talking about. I think it's something everybody's kind of trying to grapple with. So let's dive into the conversation. And I think a great place to start is UNICEF. It's a UN organization that is basically based for children. Um, and here they've laid out some basic suggestions that it's important to find out what they know even before you start the conversation and how they feel. And you've got to take their age. What's age appropriate? What topics and conversations should we have for what age? And to keep that conversation going throughout the days, you know, check in with them at night and check in with them in the morning. How's mm -hmm. everybody feeling and doing? These are really great pointers. Um, and let's dig into it a little deeper um, with the help of an expert. Chief Medical Officer of WebMD, Dr. John White. Dr. White, thank you so much for joining us for a very, very important and very topical conversation. We've all been talking about this. Um, how do we know if we need to have this conversation with our child? Like, how do we approach it with our kids? I guess it's based on age? Yeah. Well, good morning. And the slide you showed on UNICEF is a good start. The first thing I want to remind listeners is that kids aren't young adults and we can't treat them as adults. Mm. Their development is very different based on age. So I have two young boys, a seven or eight year old is going to be very different in their emotional and cognitive journey than a 13 or 14 sure. year old. Sure. So I have different conversations with each of them. But the first thing, as you point out, is just to query them. What have you heard? What have you seen? And start it from there. You know, sometimes parents feel they have to be proactive and they, you know, they have to give a whole dissertation on, on the history of war. We don't need to be doing all of that. We need to meet them where they are. And the first step is really understanding what they're hearing and also what they're seeing. That's just genius because yeah. it's going to be different, right, for every child, every age. So start the conversation with what they've seen or heard. Okay. Yeah, you, you know, doctor, uh, I, I mentioned I have a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old, particularly the two oldest of the three, and they're asking questions about it. They don't have cell phones yet, but we know the images are circulating even on the news broadcasts that are out there. What happens when, when a child has seen something horrific? Because so many images out of that area right now are horrific. What do you do then? I think that's an area where parents really have to be particularly vigilant right now. So my wife and I typically would have the news on in the background. Yep. We're not doing that right now because something to keep in mind is, is once you see an image, you can't take that away. You can't mm. unsee mm. it. So how do we be very proactive with our kids, especially, you know, our teenagers that are on social? Because on the internet, you know, you can put those filters in and hopefully they'll work about age appropriateness in those images. But I'm really concerned about, you know, even sometimes the news media and some of the images that we show of, let's be honest, of dead bodies, dead children. And that's really hard for kids to see. So again, it goes back to being vigilant, making sure what's on their phones. I know some parents who have deleted some of the news apps. I was just about to ask you, how vigilant yeah. should we get? Should we be taking the phones away, the tablets? And should we be deleting apps? I mean, even if it's temporarily, um, I guess it depends on yeah. the situation. I think that's something to consider and to be vigilant on your own social media to see when those images are appearing. So remember, in social, it's also going to be what the kids typically have done. And you should be aware of who their contacts are and who they're following and, you know, take a look at it. Because, again, it's that point. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. And many of these images can be very troubling 
for a 12 year old yeah. or 14 year old, you know, it may not be for us. So many, but it's, it's, you know, so many good tips. I mean, you know, ask them first, meet them where they are in the conversation and then be vigilant about the images and are they appropriate images for their age and then talk to them about what they've seen. One more thing, doc, before we go, mm -hmm. um, we want, first of all, our children to go to bed every night and leave the house every day feeling safe. And, and so after you've had this conversation or just in regular everyday life, give me some words Words. What what do I what do I say to let them know that they're safe and they're protected and that they're loved and they're cared for? And the other thing, Sam, to remind people is let's not have these conversations before bedtime. You know, all too often we focus on things at the end of the day. This isn't the conversation. Oh, good. We have. Good, 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 good. But give me give me those remember, words. So, how do how, you know? Tell me how yeah. I can tell them. So what I, I would say to you, Sam, is you are safe. You are safe here. And the reason why, remember, young kids, five, seven, nine, they're very concrete. They don't understand geopolitics. They don't understand how far something is. So we have to remind them that they are safe in their home, in their community. And then we also want to talk about what can we do, that there are good people around, that people are trying to make this better right now. We want to give them hope. We don't want to be all doom and gloom. So it's about you are safe. You are okay here. And there are people trying to solve this problem right thank now. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we, actually, we've got that coming up, we Mike. Do. Doc, but thank you so that much for a spending time with us. Perfect segue. Dr. White, thank you. 